All right, we are now recording. Welcome to the uh, Sandbox Review meeting. So Liz, I'll hand off to you. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, so we have a lot of applications. I think, how many do we have? I'm just quickly counting. It's 24. And I think maybe there's three that I had heard of before reading this form-ish, um, which just slightly made me wonder whether some of these projects are, yeah, very new, very, um, and I don't know whether we should, um, I don't know whether it, this is a signal that we need to somehow slightly clarify I mean, I know our, our barrier to entry here is low. Um, oh, Chris has mentioned the VS Code thing. Yes, I think that's that. That was one of the ones I've heard of. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, without changing it su such that we, you know, we still have that experimentation. We still have the let's be really open to neutral collaboration, but I wonder if we should be trying to spot what it is that maybe, I don't know, I just have a, a not great feeling about this list as an as a overall list. Um, does anybody else want to comment on that? Yeah, yeah I, I, I share the same concerns because I read through them and I haven't heard many, many of them either. And some of them actually are very much in the area of what I'm working on too. So it's very surprising because then I en ended up asking colleagues uh, and, and they haven't heard about those either. So, uh, so I, you know, they're very, basically, there's not, basically means they're really, really new. And, uh, and it's, it's, it's hard to make, I mean, I, I didn't have time to uh, actually install it and run it. Uh, because I, I just don't know how I can possibly make a judgment of the quality of the of the of, of the of these projects. So that's one of the struggle I had. It's you know I was looking at how professional they are in, in terms of the documentation, the write up, so I can kind of make those type of judgments. But without a without a longer track record of seeing the community adoption and community. <laughs> Uh, response. It's, it, it's, it's, it, it, it's, you know, I think I will probably personally need more time to play with those projects to, 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 to at least try to form an opinion. It's, 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 it, this is actually quite, this one is amazingly quite challenging for me. I, I mean, I, I, I should have started earlier to, to review the projects, but I was doing it yesterday and, uh, and, and, and I was. Hi, Aaron. Hello, sorry I'm late. That meeting ran way over. You've just made it in time though. <laughs> but yeah, we haven't we haven't actually started discussing individual projects, but we were kind of raising our sort of general worry about whether the well, it's interesting that we've got such a long list of projects that most of us have not heard of and, and whether or not yeah. that says something about the, you know, while we we want to encourage experimentation, but I, I, I yeah. feel like there's some kind of yeah. But we've long how... we've lived this forever, right? Like the balance of is it viable or is it just experimentation, and they want publicity? I don't know. Is that what we're getting at? Like exactly, or do, or are people thinking that like every project? is best off in the CNCF? Is, is there no other kind of route for people to run open source projects? I, you know, I... I mean, for me, it's just the difficulty to judge because, uh, uh, you know, like I said, I didn't, unfortunately, I didn't have time to actually install and play with those projects myself. So, so that would probably be what's honestly what's required. If a project has only been, if I couldn't find much uh, evidence of you know community adoption or or comments people made or 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 Slack channel activity. So it's it, it that that that's what makes it hard to, the, the, uh, 
uh, or like if I ask other other people I know and they haven't who are supposed to work in that area, they they haven't heard of it either. So it just made it very hard for me to judge. That that that's all. The the, the, the subjective uh, judgment is yeah. done. But, but we can, yeah, we can go through them and and there are a few that. Really yeah, cool. I also wonder if if tags can help us somehow here because I know some of the projects they come to talk first, and they give a presentation, and the tag chairs and attendees they form some opinions about the projects and that's probably something that we can benefit from. Yeah. Yes. We also don't have to go in order. You don't have to go like first in first out here. You know, there is different projects here that have different maturity levels here. So the TOC could choose to focus on particular ones first or an area. It's really all up to- I'm just stopping share for a second, sorry. Yeah, yeah no worries. Or to be applied before and- Yeah. And the only issue was with the name and they've changed it. Sorry, that was the open ELB one, right? That's, that's right. Yeah. Um, sorry, I just wanted to be able to open other windows as well. So, can you still see the sandbox thing if I do that? It's good. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, actually. Yeah. So, we, we looked at when it was called Porter before we looked at it, was it just the naming that we were concerned about last time? That was the main holdup, I think. Yeah. Because I, th I think this was... We talk about the differences. Oh, that's right, because we had Metal LB at the same time last time, didn't we? And they've written a post about their, their advantages compared to Metal LB. Oh my God. So this is from a company called CubeSphere and they are doing, they, they have one more, uh, which is the last one, open function. So they have one more submission. I don't know what others they already have in CNCF. I mean, I guess in terms of the characteristics we normally look for, it, it's got a reasonable number of stars and things like that. It doesn't look, you know. Has anybody got any comments or should we take this one to a vote? Let's do a vote, plus one. All right, so vote for open ELB. All right, so next one. Can I make, I'm not sure I can make that fit all on the screen so <laughs> open cluster management <laughs> maybe look at your own copies um this was a a red hat project i think is that right yes yeah and and they seem to have i mean you know taken by from their comments they seem to have lots of collaboration going on already so 
Any points anyone wants to raise about open cluster management? Any concerns? Uh, no concerns as such. Uh, I uh, I liked what they were doing with the different caps in Kubernetes. Uh, they are piggybacking on some of the submissions from like Google um, to stitch things together into a you know stitch, stitch multiple clusters together. So uh, that was a good sign for me. Yeah, and having been part of that in my previous life. You know, I think there really was an effort to <clears throat> not have it be OpenShift focused and really go away of the community. There were some architectural decisions made early on to like pivot away from more IBM OpenShift way of doing things and how the community was doing it. So I think they've fully embraced that that's where it should live and grow. And it's needed. I mean, this is from a customer use case, end user, like, having this is pretty key to a, a lot of different large and small companies. So I like the idea of it growing in the community. I would have liked them to call call out what you just said, Erin, uh, that this is not OpenShift specific. Um, I don't see that. Yeah, and it actually, since it didn't even start in OpenShift, like, <clears throat> did it, it spin started... out of the cluster API working group or whatever they were called? Yeah, yeah, no. no. Um, I mean, there are definitely people that worked on, what was it, SIG multi-cluster and then cluster API. I think it's a lot of different people trying to accomplish the same thing. Yeah, just originated on the IBM side of things and then went over to Red Hat from what I was told. Correct. So IBM had it um, when IBM bought Red Hat. Red Hat took it over and said, well, we're not going to do it unless it's open source. So it took a fairly long, a, map, a lot of effort to then open source it and then to look back and make sure that the technologies that were chosen as part of the architecture really fit within the landscape. Like there was a pivot to, you know, GitOps instead of CubeFed, things like that, that changed underneath to be able to support both the models to make it more open. Is this related to, like, I remember there was this IBM thing called advanced cluster management that was announced a few years ago, or is this- Yep, it is that, yep. Oh, I see. So yep. it's, the, it's sort of the open source uh, descendant of that. So it's, it's, it's got a longer history than, than it. Yeah, well, the one thing I was trying to find out, it was, uh, how new a project it is because it seems pretty substantial, but but it's also very new. So I guess that kind of explains it. Right. So mm -hmm. it's new in the sense of recently open sourced, like in the last year per se, but the project actually has been around for quite a while. So it's it it is fairly mature in the sense that it's been worked on, you know, longer than this repo would indicate, just because it went from being closed to open. Okay. Right, so that may also suggest that, I mean, things like the number of stars are pretty small at the moment, but that may be, you know, because it's so new in open source form. I mean, it is interesting that, I mean, assuming that the, the main repo is open cluster management IO slash OCM. It's got 78 stars. I mean, maybe that's enough for a sandbox, but. But I mean, the, the commentary of it and the history of it makes it look much more mature than that, I would say. API has got 169 stars. That's the. Right. Um, I think that is the longest, maybe the oldest one. I, I'm just, I was trying to work out which is the original. That goes back to March 2020. But yeah, I don't know. Should we do votes? Okay, I'll put votes.
All right, next up is Cubitus Installer. Similar projects are VMware's handy. <laughs> Not really, but sure. It's <laughs> ambitious. <laughs> yeah. It's quite a statement. <laughs> yeah. I, hmm. It's interesting that it's on GitLab. Do we have any? I can't remember if we have any particular sort of rules or reasons no. about that. No. GitLab is fine. Is this only a Nansville playbook? I, I didn't really get what it does exactly. Yeah, an opinionated collection of Ansible playbooks. And it's based on Coop Spray. So I guess it's playbook written on top of Coop Spray. Hmm. I'm, I'm less familiar with GitLab than I am with GitHub. I'm seeing like one star. Am I looking in the right place? I was also curious, like I'm looking at the releases and it's empty. Again, uh, not a, don't have experience working with a GitLab, so I'm not sure if it's the right one. Under yeah. deployments releases, there is nothing. And I, I think there's it's... only one developer from the commits. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you know, if you look at the architecture, it's very, very specific. You know, it's, it's okay. I think it's probably okay to um, uh, use GitLab to host a project or use GitLab as a Git repo. But this is like literally has GitLab baked into the architecture itself. It's, it's very uh, specific to uh, it, it almost, it is a very opinionated deployment of Coop Spray. I'm also pausing on the, why do you want to contribute your project? answer which is more visibility and more contributions yeah we asked them to come back after six months and is this a six month checkpoint you mean did they come come to us before yeah i don't remember this but you know. i don't believe I don't so either. no i this, don't think okay. so this I'm not sure this believe. project is more than six months old to be honest yeah, yeah. i was it's just gonna say the same thing yeah, th there are three mem three additional members other than the primary guy, and all have been added only four months before. So, probably most probably not. I I think I would want to uh, see April April twenty sixth initial commit. Mm -hmm. There's only one actual contributor. Yeah. You know, I yeah, think I'd I mean... want to see like some some evidence that it's actually turning into a community project. This looks like one person offering and i mean even if it was a community project do is it in itself a project scale project given that it's based on cube spray and cube spray is not i think cube spray is part. should this be a contribution to cube spray instead or i don't know well, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I just, I just don't think it has a substantial generic utility. You know, it's, it's so specific to how one team or one person is using Cube Spray and GitLab to configure Kubernetes clusters. That's, that's what it seems to me. Mm. Um, so, it, I had a proposal at the beginning. Uh, should we go to, uh, uh, well, let's deal with this first. Uh, do you want to uh, tell them to come back? Mm, I don't know. I don't think, so. I, I just, I mean, I, this one is not, I don't think it kind of qualifies as a, you know, just, I think it just lacks substance. I think, yeah, let's, let's drop the please reapply. I think, 
if it if they did somehow suddenly get a huge amount of community adoption and that suggested that there was a kind of consensus that this was the right way to install kubernetes then maybe but even still it, it just seems too too opinionated too specific and i think if we tell them to come back in six six months we might be saying actually no we don't think it fits anyway i agree i think it's okay to say no yeah i th i think i think let's drop the please reapply I, I mean, you know, there's there's got to be a kind of Im, implied if the situation changes, you know, maybe we'll regret this decision of saying no and, and we'd like to come, ask you to come back. But I, I don't think we will. I, I, I think it's too opinionated and too specific. Do we want to vote on this or? We probably should. Otherwise, I won't know. Oh, it's insisted on re turning that into qubits, like the measurement. Okay, we are down to 20 minutes left. So I had a uh, thing at the beginning, I posted like five projects. Could we go to them um, instead of going through each one by one? I think they'll, we'll see many more of these. We'll, we're gonna deal with the same way we dealt with. Uh, mm. Oh, I see what, you, what you're saying, yeah. So VS Code Kubernetes tools, let's do that one next. I think that does make sense. Um, can, can you start the recording a second? All right, we're back. Go ahead, Dims. Yeah, so uh, what drew me to this one was uh, you, since uh, the plugin essentially uh, is editing the stuff that is, uh, you know, code schema stuff from the Helm and Kubernetes projects. Uh, if it's closer uh, to uh, the ecosystem, then the plugin gets will get updated sooner than later. And if it is self-contained uh, that people can build and use with a local version of VS Code, then um, you know it might be easier uh, to update uh, the plugin as well. So that's what drew me to this uh, specific one. I, I don't buy it for a few reasons. And I love VS Code. I use VS Code all the time. I think it's brilliant, but I don't buy that we should be supporting an extension to a platform and thereby, you know, we're, we're essentially putting an endorsement behind a particular IDE that is not part of the, you know, it, it's owned by a particular vendor. Um, and I just, I, I feel like that's setting a really bad precedent. And I, I don't buy the argument that says becoming part of the CNCF would buy vendor neutrality for the VS Code extension, because I think the VS Code extension has to work with, you know, for, for it to be successful, it has to work with Kubernetes and Helm and whatever other projects that ecosystem drives it towards. Am I completely off off base with that uh, if we had precedent before then uh, yes uh, one more thing wouldn't we wouldn't have minded just like you know we have uh, you know sdks and things yeah. like kubernetes then adding one more is not like a big deal but so we are starting new uh, sorry chris go ahead yeah i mean I, the way i see it is like they're coming in as sandbox you know i think this is an opportunity for them to open up that you know project you know, more, you know, VS Code by far is the most dominant IDE out there used by developers, right? So having something within CNCF that's supported by more than just one vendor long-term, I think is a good thing. 
but I think the onus is on Microsoft to prove that they could do that. Like we wouldn't move them further along incubation graduation is kind of how I, 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 I don't think we can be drawing lines around like, oh, you know, Sandbox has different rules for what we consider to be cloud native or what we consider to be neutral. Yeah. I, I really, I, I just feel like it, it sends a huge message, huge message that CNCF says you should use VS Code. And as I say, I do use VS Code. I love VS Code, but I'm but, not sure that that's a message we should in, you know, it, yeah. it's not a neutral message at all. I mean, one way to spin this, would you be willing to take like extensions to like Vim or Emacs or IntelliJ down the line that were supporting Kubernetes development in, in those tools? I, I, I'm not sure what the benefit is. Like, does it actually, it, this is another argument for it. This is, yeah, maybe part of the ecosystem for cloud native, but it doesn't, it's not actually cloud native code. Well, whether it is cloud native or not is kind of irrelevant. It's, it's an editor and we don't want to become a home for all the editors. Correct. I think I think the argument is is yeah I mean I can relate to the substance just does it have enough the project itself does it have enough substance to to, to stand alone to be healthy you know I, I mean obviously I can I could imagine say a, a some some major feature like Kubernetes itself on Windows I mean that is that is very important that's very substantial but uh, but, but given the plugin on in editor, I think that's where the argument is. It's, uh, it's, it's, does it qualify as a standalone project? Well, it, it, it doesn't qualify in the sense that you cannot use it without VS Code. So and, what's and a that's... nice way to say no? Uh, do we say that uh, we, we, we don't, uh, CNCF doesn't yet uh, has a policy around uh, IDE and IDE plugins. Uh, so instead of saying no specifically to them, we, we can like, uh, I, I'm asking because there is a uh, number six, uh, no local host. Uh, it's in the same boat. Uh, it's an IDE for both uh, VS Code and JetBrain. So, uh, you know, we could say that we don't encourage uh, IDE and IDE plugins right now at this moment. I think the plugins though would have to work across platforms to be neutral enough. Yeah. It's the same discussion we could have just had with um, the Red Hat discussion. If that only worked on OpenShift, we probably wouldn't have blessed it as part of a sandbox, you know, yeah. but it's, it's yeah. you know, uses lots of different products, pr projects, and it's not specific to anything. And I think this is where the argument stems from. So if those plugins can be widely used amongst many different IDEs, then I think it does fit it. I don't think we want to have a blanket statement that we feel like tooling is irrelevant. Okay, so we take a vote. Chris is making a comment about other vendors maybe depend yeah. on VS Code. Do you want to? Uh, do you want to? Yeah, no, I, I, they will remain nameless, but there's other people that you know depend on this and embed it in products that would prefer this to be a little bit more vendor neutral and not fully um, controlled by one vendor. But how does that? I mean, VS Code is controlled by one the, the ide but the plugin right like the ide is basically it's 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 out there it's like de facto almost standard um right if you're going to be building tools you're generally going to have to write extensions in vs code to to support them as you know depending what type of business you're in so you know if you're a red hat or someone and you're embedding you know supporting kubernetes you need, you need to generally have some support for vs code extensions right I believe the OpenShift team does this currently in, in a roundabout um, way. I get what you're getting at. Yep. Um, hmm. So. I, I, 
It's a scoping question at the end of the day, I think overall, if we want tooling like this uh, in the organization. But anything that we could get out of potentially uh, <laughs> like the largest tooling IDE tool for Kubernetes, most widely used um, to a vendor neutral multi-company governance thing, I think is a good thing. I look at it from that perspective. I just, I, I just feel like it sends such a non-neutral message. I, I mean, I, I would be interested to hear more about this other vendors that, you know, I mean, if they have a dependency on VS Code, then, you know, either they're still, able, I mean, VS Code has that sort of marketplace model, right? So they can still ship other plugins and so on, right? Yeah, I mean, it's an open marketplace. There's actually a whole thing called like there's open or no, there's the VSX exchange which is like an open marketplace outside of Mark, uh, outside of Microsoft um, control too. Um, yeah. So there's many so ways think, to kind of I mean, distribute these, um, you know, plugins. But, but from a neutrality point of view, I view it as like if IntelliJ or someone else came up, you know, um, or the Lens project, that's kind of another one that they're doing some interesting things. Like if they came to CNCF, I don't think the answer would be no if you accepted or if all y'all accepted this project. You're basically saying like we're open to any type of IDE or SDK that makes Kubernetes more consumable for end users. I think there's two separate things, neither of which we have precedent on. Well, one of which we kind of we kind of have negative precedent on. So, so one is, do we accept projects that like have a huge dependency on something non-neutral? And I think we don't. Yeah. And the second sort of orthogonal thing is, do we accept IDEs? I um, feel like that's. Yes. We picked some projects which are specific to Intel um, that we need support. Uh, runtime, if I remember right. Like an SGX thing? Uh, yeah. 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 And that's Intel only. That's we interesting. Yeah. I mean, I suppose back in the day, everything was Intel only <laughs> support regardless. <laughs> yeah. Six type. Thing, but Just now because, we have ARM, so it's different. <laughs> and RISC V. So I don't think accepting Intel means that we won't accept ARM or RISC V, right? Just like accepting something for VS Code means we won't accept IntelliJ or whatever the other IDs. Um, and I agree with you, Dims, that the no local host thing falls into the same kind of right. um, bucket. What tag does this even fall under, or does it not? Ooh, app delivery would be probably the closest. closest. Um, yeah. To, to, to some mythical tag developer experience that we don't have. Correct. Yeah, that would be another one. Yeah. This is this is more app development. So yeah. 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 It's yeah. Maybe I mean maybe that's the evolution though, right? Of how things are coming about. You know, we're getting away from the guts and more up into the app layer. I don't know, maybe it's a consideration we should start looking at if we, it looks like we're getting more things around this. Maybe we need a working group that's looking at this close, more closely. Oh, this is I, like when tech gets mature, it eventually ends up in an ID. <laughs> in, in the end, it'll end up with um, like a chat function, right? You can point and click four things and you generate the YAML for you. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> Once you get ID wizards, you know you've made it. <laughs> Was it, when when are they introducing Kubernetes stories? Oh goodness! <laughs> <laughs> Mythical tags are out of scope for this call. <laughs> but can they have unicorns on them, Amy? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> There's only so much we can do. Um, uh, time check. We have five minutes. Yeah. Well, should should we? Do, are we ready to hold a vote on VS Code? Um, yeah, so Chris, that lens project, I think is slightly different for two reasons. Yeah. One, if they, 
donated the entirety of lens they would be yeah. donating the entirety of lens yeah. and the second is it is kubernetes focused it's not a yeah you know a, an all purpose ide yeah but i agree it does take us into an interesting space i mean my my perspective is given how predominant uh, uh you know vc code is and uh as long as there's enough substance in this project, I, I think it qualifies as long as, and this project itself is, you know, 100% MIT open source and Kubernetes focused. So, so I've been, you know, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly inclined to support it. Yeah, let's vote. <laughs> At least we'd be able to get yeah. to one more project. <laughs> All right, so, yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> I think this is setting a dangerous, dangerous precedent. <laughs> I want people to make it easy for people. Yeah, it's sandbox. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, Chris, you say that it's sandbox, but sandbox is supposed to be experiments that either succeed or fail we don't have a path yeah. that says we've decided this isn't appropriate for cncf yeah no that's a, that's a scoping thing i think the experiment for me is can the project move to a multi-governed thing where multiple vendors that build upon and depend on it and products could participate that's how i um, that's so how almost i do it moved into its own yeah. thing altogether i i guess i agree with that path but i I don't know. I mean, the local host one supports multiple IDEs, which I, I I find more neutral. Like, I don't know would 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 Microsoft be supportive of of this plugin supporting uh, IntelliJ? I think there's pro. Yeah, I don't know if the question makes sense. Like, maybe they have like underpinning technology that could be reused by IntelliJ, right? Like, there's probably extensions that are built specifically for vs code but maybe there's some underpinning core libraries that other ids could use if that makes sense well i, I don't know that's the thing that local host one supports both but i don't know if the case just duplicated i mean yeah. effectively it's just two projects but <laughs> yeah um or whether there's actually some overlap because that would make it more neutral if yeah. it was ways to interact with kubernetes in your ide yeah yeah, I mean, I think Microsoft's track record has improved, so I'm like a little bit lenient here, but, um, you know, it's, it's up to all y'all. Um, I mean, my, this, my this vote is... against is not in any way intended to be anti-Microsoft. It's just <laughs> pro-neutrality. <Yeah. laughs> it's widely used. It's extremely widely yeah. used. It has over a million installs. Type I mean, thing, okay, so. I'm, I'm going to vote for it then <laughs> as an experiment. <laughs> if it doesn't work out, it's sandbox. <laughs> <laughs> Liz could vote to extricate it. <laughs> so. I'm going Price. to say that passes because a zero was counting as an abstention. That's neither for or against. Oh, abstention. now it'll be all on my Aaron, shoulders. come back. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so Which one is going to call JetBrains and ask them to submit a Kubernetes plugin for uh, IntelliJ? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so should we do votes for local host as well? I'm going to be nothing if not consistent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're at we're at time almost too. So <laughs> yeah, maybe we can squeeze this in or not. Yeah. Elena, cast your vote before you have to leave. Oh no! I guess you can. <laughs> I think she already drafts. Yeah. Sorry, I have, I'm, I'm I'm still here. What are we? Yeah, what are we voting? We're <laughs> voting on local host. local host. Uh, I think I need more time on the lo no local host thing. Uh, I can't do it today. Okay. Yeah. All right. I guess that is where we are then. All right. How do we want to handle like the? Uh, um, if I have seven of you, a quorum is eight. Um. I believe 
VS code does not actually pass because um, Aaron is so only we've, one. we've written this up before. Let me check. Right. That's why I need um, help. <laughs> yeah, because it depends on the number of attendees. <sighs> I think I pinned it to the channel. Um, right. We need a minimum of eight TOC members to make a decision. Sandbox approval is a simple majority. So we need over 50% of those present to plus one. And therefore, VS Code does pass. Yes. All right. Included. And local host, we didn't get enough votes to be core. At we, we had time. So, all yeah. right. Yeah. Thank you all very, very Thank much. You. Take care.